Hey there ladies and jelly spoons, Jote here again. So today I'm going to be doing an update video on the seeds that I planted. Uh, my herbs and my tomatoes have popped up, they're ready to be put in the ground. And I may have waited actually a few more days than I should have. Some of them are looking a little leggy already. So I do want to go ahead and get those in just as soon as humanly possible. I'm also going to do an update on the pine berries that I planted and show you how those turned out. Let's see what we can get into. Okay, so here is the herb tray that I put together. Uh, as you can see, all of these in the front row are sweet basil, and they are coming up very well. Uh, I think all those seeds came up very strong. I'm not absolutely positive that this one right here is thyme. I'm not sure. There's a few little ones that have started to pop up, but that's the only one. So it, it kind of leads me to believe it might be a weed, but I'm not... I'm not certain. I can't tell from the leaf structure just yet. And this is the only one that has popped up in the oregano seed tray um, in that row. So, again, I'm going to probably wait on those. But look at all of the tomatoes I got. The Gardener's Delight have come up very nicely. There's some really good, strong-looking plants there. Um, all the way on the back row. Those are all Gardener's Delight, and they pretty much looks like every uh, little cell has tomatoes in it. The Super Boys, eh, a little bit less impressive. There's a few here and there. I don't even know. If the, that doesn't look like a tomato to me. That looks like a weed. So, never can tell. Uh, but this is a Super Boy, and it looks good and strong. And I'm fairly certain that that's a tomato as well. Now look at these Cherokee purple. They have come up in droves. I've got to get these in the ground before, uh, well, before we lose any more casualties like this little guy. Now this, ladies and jelly spoons, is my pride and joy. These are all corn plants. Some of them are seven, eight inches tall. They're coming through very, very nice. Um, I've actually gone ahead and supplemented uh, them with fertilizer from my rabbits. This is all rabbit manure fresh on here and a little bit of straw that I use to, uh, you know, just keep it off the ground in the rabbit pen. Um, and they are doing very, very well this year. I got them in early, so I'm probably way ahead of the game. But the frost that we did have uh, a couple weeks ago didn't do any damage to them whatsoever. And... They are looking strong, and I hope I get some ears of corn off these guys this year, because I am excited. Okay, so this uh, trellis system that I have here, uh, these are cattle panels that I've just bent in half and put in with T-bars on, on the four corners to maintain the shape. Now, last year I grew cucumbers in these, uh, and they were literally just filled with cucumbers. We got jars of pickles. Uh, they were just they were just tremendous, so it was really, really nice. What I'm going to do is this year, I don't know if I'm even going to do cucumbers and still kind of up in the air whether I want to do it again, but I do want tomatoes. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to line the outside of, the, of this cattle panel trellis area in tomatoes. I'm going to put all the Cherokee purple on this side, and I'm going to put all the other tomatoes on this side. That way they're, they're separate. Hopefully we won't get too... Uh, much cross-pollination, but even if we do, maybe we'll just get another interesting kind of tomato. Who knows? Here's the Cherokee purple. Now once they're to this point, I don't worry about them too much. They're either going to live or they won't. I'm going to put them in the ground in just kind of an orderly fashion, but I'm not going to stress over the situation. I've got quite a few of them. They seem to, uh, 
They seem to be doing fairly well already. So I'm just going to put them in the ground, give them a little bit of water to drink, and let them do their thing. And just like that, the Cherokee purples are in the ground. We'll give them some water and let them do their thing. Okay, so here is all the leaf mulch that I pulled off of this area over here where I planted the corn. Now that the corn has come up, I'm going to go through and sprinkle it on uh, over and around the, uh, the corn area now. And that will help cut down on some of the weeds that I might be getting. But I also need to get to this area right here along the cattle panel uh, side because that's where I'm going to put the Better Boy and Gardener Delight tomatoes. So the corn is mulched. I've never seen anybody mulch corn, but I'm gonna see how it works for me this year. Can't be as bad as last year when everything died, so if that happens, we learn something new, right? I don't know if you can tell the contrast in that soil over there versus this soil that's had the leaf mulch over it. It is a little bit damper, but look how dark and rich that is. That means that that has got some nutrients in it and my tomatoes are gonna love it.
And there are all my tomatoes, all planted in some nice rows. They'll fill in real nice. I can turn them back. And then uh, hopefully we'll have a whole lot of tomatoes this year. All right, so here are some of the pine berries that I planted. Uh, you can see I only had two of them really do anything. Here's some that it just rotted, that just rotted, that just rotted, that just rotted. So only two of those were very successful. Um, I'm just very, very disappointed in the way that those turned out. I might be able to get, you know, those to survive through the winter and hopefully when they go to uh, putting out runners this summer, maybe I can clone a few of them and get a few more plants. Okay, and here's where I planted the other strawberry plants. Uh, as you can see, the only thing that's really coming up here is grass and a few weeds. Uh, the strawberry plants completely died. Uh, same in this area where I planted them. These are just weeds and grass. So those those didn't survive at all. And this is the only one that I planted in this big uh, raised bed that survived. So out of 40 plants, I got three. So less than 10%. Uh, just extremely, extremely disappointing. Okay, so with those strawberries, with the pine berries, I only paid $12 for that whole package. And that's not really a big deal. That's, you know, a little bit more than you would invest, obviously, in a few seed packs. But I was really under the impression that those were going to do well. The packaging looked really nice. And, you know, like I said in my pine berry planting video, I explained where I got it from. Um, it's from a pretty reputable source. I've never bought plants from that store before, but given the circumstances that I'm in now and the results that I received, I probably never will again. All right, ladies and jelly spoons. Well, that concludes this video. I just wanted to give you a quick update on how my plants were coming and the successes I was having. And if I have any failures, I'll be sure to let you know about that too. There's one thing for sure is I am not an expert. So if I mess up, I may as well pass it along to you so you don't make the same mistake as I did. Anyway, if you liked what you saw here, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing with my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, y'all take care. We'll catch you later. See ya.